Hey guys, today I am out to answer the question on which protocol is better for streaming music. Is it Bluetooth or is it Wi-Fi? And the answer might surprise you. Well, it actually did surprise me. So what I have around my neck here, this is the Sonos Ace Bluetooth headphones. It also goes via Wi-Fi. I'll explain the difference in just a little bit, but the Bluetooth implementation, the protocol is 5.4. And I have an iPhone, which is right where my Sonos app is, and that is running Bluetooth 5.3. Before we go on to it, we want to talk a little bit about the protocol differences, right? For Bluetooth, it is actually a 2.4 gigahertz wireless uh, signal and it goes up to 2 megabits per second. It can theoretically cover 240 meters and transmit at about 100 milliwatt. Different implementation, different radios will have different power rating. So don't take my word for it. This is what I researched on. Wi-Fi on the other hand has 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz. But the Sonos Arc, right, the soundbar that's right there, it actually interfaces with the Sonos Ace over 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth and 2.4 gigahertz can theoretically in a three stream format go 450 mbps to 600 mbps in a four stream format but i'm gonna assume that between the sonos arc and the sonos ace they're gonna probably use one or two streams so that might be 150 to 300 megabits per second and bear in mind Bluetooth is 2 megabits per second. This is in the hundreds of megabits per second. So it is quite a lot more bandwidth. It has an indoor theoretical range of 70 meters and 250 meters outdoor, which is irrelevant in most of the time. If you're going to be wearing this, I don't think you're going to be 250 meters away from your phone, by which time you probably lost your phone. Now, it seems that the maximum allowed 2.4 gigahertz transmit power it varies by country. In North America, you can transmit up to 1,000 milliwatt. That's one full watt of power. In Europe, as well as in Singapore, it is at 100 milliwatts for Wi-Fi. So that puts the Bluetooth power and the Wi-Fi power to about 100 milliwatts. So I have mentioned that Wi-Fi carries a lot higher bandwidth, right? Because Wi-Fi can go into the hundreds of megabits per second, whereas Bluetooth is only 2 megabits per second. But bear in mind that even at high bandwidth requirements of LDAC, which is a very high-res form of audio transmission over Bluetooth protocol, it only takes up to a maximum of 990 kbps. That is 0.99 mbps. So Bluetooth 2 megabits per second, more than sufficient. Bandwidth is not the issue because audio requires very little bandwidth for wireless transmission of audio. But bear in mind that we are still talking about stereo because if it is Atmos, it may require a bit more. Now, Apple AirPlay 2 has actually recently just announced in WWDC 2024 that they are going to support spatial audio, Atmos audio, over AirPlay 2. But AirPlay 2 uses a form of proprietary Wi-Fi. So the bandwidth there is a lot higher. So bandwidth isn't the issue. And for regular SBC and AAC, the music quality, the bit rate, you won't exceed 256 kbps, maybe max of 384 kbps, unless you keep your files in really, really high bit rate format. And for Android users or non-Apple users, the source is it actually supports aptX adaptive. aptX adaptive uses between 279 and 420 kbps so still way way within the bandwidth capacity for bluetooth much less wi-fi so latency is probably where the difference is for bluetooth latency is about 200 milliseconds for aac and sbc uh, iphone has this implemented very well so they actually do compensate for the delay so you don't realize it when you are watching video which requires lip synchronization with the audio uh, on apple devices now even LDAC also has 200 milliseconds delay so if you are out to get low latency out of your audio when you're on an android device i don't actually recommend LDAC so aptx adaptive is between 50 and 80 milliseconds which is actually pretty good so 
the Sonos Ace supports aptX adaptive and you will require a non-Apple device to actually use that. But Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi is actually sub 10 milliseconds. So many a times if you do any form of speed test on your home network, you will probably get a round trip and that's to a server on the internet, mind you, of less than 10 milliseconds. But the difference is it can vary very widely. The same connection that use an average of less than 10 milliseconds can sometimes increase to 100 milliseconds. Now, this is actually compensated by the fact that Wi-Fi actually does have some form of buffering, so it takes care of that. And Wi-Fi is subject to very, very high interference, which is why you will see that sometimes you will see the 10 milliseconds response jump to about 100 millisecond response. Now, what is the use case of getting range out of your connection? Is it Bluetooth connection or is it Wi-Fi connection? Now, if you're going to be using a Sonos Ace when you're out and about, you're likely to be pairing it with your phone, right? And if you're pairing it with your phone, it is very unlikely that you're going to be very, very far away from the phone. You're carrying it with you. At the best, it is in your backpack, right? And in most cases, it should be all right. Now, I have a habit of pacing up and down in the office um, when I'm taking my call. So I do tend to walk around quite a bit. Um, for Bluetooth, I roam as far as to the next room and it is still all right. But in most cases, you will not actually need to walk far for a Bluetooth connection. So today, what we want to test is the distance that Bluetooth can travel versus the distance that Wi-Fi can travel. So in the first test that I'm going to be doing, I'm using a distance meter here. This is a laser distance meter. It will point at where my phone is and it will measure the distance. So I have the Sonos Ace now connected to my iPhone and it is playing via Bluetooth. So it's limited by the Bluetooth 5.3 protocol in the iPhone and they probably tune the power down for uh, mobile devices quite a bit so that it doesn't suck up so much battery. So let's see how that works out and how far I can get away from it. Now I'm just going to be trying to walk around the house and move from room to room to see if you will be um, still able to get the sound coming from there and I'll be measuring the distance and I will accumulate those distances on the screen so that you can see how far actually the connection can go. So right off now, we are actually sitting. This is my regular sitting position. Um, the phone is actually there where the Sonos app is. So I'm using a distance measure here. Uh, let me just point there and see how far that is. Okay, there you go. Um, not sure if you can see it, but it is 1.79 meters. Let's, 1 point, let's do 1.8 meters for, uh, to round off. So that it's easier to calculate. That's about six feet, right? So let me test this. All right, so the sound is playing, same room. We cannot expect the Bluetooth to drop. If it drops, then this guy has a big problem. So I'm gonna be standing up. I'm gonna be walking around the house and let me open the door to the studio, right? So I'm now standing outside the studio and we are about, let me just measure the distance again. Uh, this is about 2.3 meters away. Signal is still good. How about, just let me close the door. So the door is now closed, 2.3 meters there. I am in the living room. Sorry, it's kind of like a mess here. I'm just going to measure the distance between here and the door. And you have a 4.1 meters. Add to the 2.3 meters, you'll probably get about 6.5 meters. So 6.5 meters away, the music is still playing. So we are separated by a wall. This is a partition wall, not concrete wall. And the door is closed. Signal-wise, not a problem. Now I'm just going to move to another room and in the other room, uh, it is actually separated by a concrete door. Now in this concrete door, uh, concrete wall, what am I talking about? So um, after I close the door, separated by a concrete door, uh, we are probably about three meters away, but blocked by a completely concrete wall. Music is still playing, so it's still good. So I'm going to be moving away into another room. Now this is going to be slightly further away and I would say we will be blocked by two, two concrete doors. Uh, 
two concrete walls. What am I talking about? So two concrete walls with the door closed and the music is still playing. So I'm going to be here, right? So this is probably as blocked as I can get while being on the same level. Music is still streaming perfectly fine. Not an issue at all. Huh. There's a washroom there. Maybe I'll just go inside the toilet and let's see whether the music still keeps up. Okay. And here we go. Huh. I noticed a drop. Okay, so this is three closed doors away. Oh, the music came back. It is stuttering at this point. We are, let me just measure the distance between here and the door. Okay, we are 4.8 meters away and add that to 2.2 meters between that door and the other door. That's 7 meters, about 10 meters away. But the music has come back and it's come back very, very quickly. It was as if it was just a small little break in the connection. Okay, actually, maybe I will walk to the kitchen. And if I'm walking to the kitchen, I will probably... Let me see. Hmm. I have a small room at the back and that is probably as far back as I can get. Okay, I won't go inside the room. I'm being blocked. Okay, the music is still playing. I tell you what, let me get through the fire rated main door. Fire rated main door. I open it. Okay, let's see. Music is still playing. Music is still good. Okay, and there you go. I'm actually outside my house. It's pausing now again. Okay, so this is probably our maximum. We are kind of like 20 meters or maybe slightly less than 20 meters. We are actually being blocked by quite a lot of doors and uh, rooms. Let me get back into the house. Okay, the connection has dropped completely. It is not recovering itself. Oh, actually it skipped track. So the music is still playing. But yes, it did drop when I was out of the apartment. All right, so let me switch over to Wi-Fi now. So I switched over to Wi-Fi and now you are listening to the Sonos Arc and it is playing Spotify from my computer, it's all connected. So the Sonos Ace has a sound swap feature that will swap anything that is playing on the Sonos Arc to the headphones. And let me just activate it and we will go about the testing for Wi-Fi. The sound from the Sonos Arc has actually transferred to the Sonos Ace. So same thing, um, in the same room, I would expect no less than uh, what it is currently doing. The sound is playing, not a problem. Head tracking is actually turned on. So the Sonos Ace has head tracking. I think that probably consumes a bit more bandwidth. I'm not very sure. But if you are actually playing Atmos on the Sonos Arc, it will transfer the spatial audio to the Sonos Ace. And that is probably not stereo. I don't know where the processing is done. Is it on the Arc or is it done here? after streaming the multi-channels over. If I find out or if you know, do leave a comment in the comment section down below to let me know. I learned as much from you as you learn from me. So I'm going to be walking around the house. Okay, so I'm stepping out of my studio right now. So door closed. Yep, music is still moving. Not a problem. I'm going to be moving to the adjacent room, which I didn't have problems with the Bluetooth. And now, this is still working and I will have the door closed. Door closed, concrete wall. Yep, still no issues. So all is good. I'm going to move another room, which means to say I'll be two rooms away. Okay, now I am two rooms away, separated by two concrete walls. Yep, the music is still playing. So Wi-Fi is actually doing pretty well. Not as bro. I can't tell whether it's better than Bluetooth or not because the music is still playing. 
this is not a test on fidelity, this is just a test on the range of whether um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth will be able to reach where we are going in the house. So I'm actually two rooms away already. Now I'm going to go to the washroom. Oh, even before I hit the washroom, the audio is breaking. So the Wi-Fi has less range than the Bluetooth because at this point, before entering the washroom, the sound has already cut off. Okay, I'm going to go back. It's very spotty right now. Okay, at the door, the music has come back. Yes, okay, okay. So, it does seem that the Wi-Fi is actually not as strong as the Bluetooth. So I'm going to move to the kitchen and let's see, let's see in the kitchen, in the kitchen. Okay, the music is still holding up. I'm going to go to the furthest point on this floor that I can get in the house. Oh, all right. So this small little room here, the music has cut off again. So again, Wi-Fi is not performing as well as Bluetooth in terms of range, right? The connection has dropped. The audio is not coming back. I'm tempted to go out, but it's not going to work. But I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, I'm not closing the main door. Okay, the sound is breaking up. And the main door isn't even closed. So, definitely for sure, Wi-Fi doesn't travel as far as Bluetooth. So after this very quick test, we can draw a couple of conclusions, right? The first is that Wi-Fi is not superior than Bluetooth for range purposes. Now, I'm not saying that there's no use case for Wi-Fi because it is highly possible that you can actually maximize the amount of data that you're passing over Wi-Fi, which is why the Sonos Arc and the Sonos Ace, actually, it does sound better when it's connected via Wi-Fi and you can hear the spatial audio because there is simply more bandwidth to transmit across Wi-Fi as opposed to the measly two megabits per second on Bluetooth. And Bluetooth range is actually doing pretty well. So I would say that if you're going to be using this as purely Bluetooth headphones, you shouldn't be disappointed. There are very, very few use cases which will actually require you to exceed the range of Bluetooth, right? Unless you're connecting this to a laptop and you're walking around the office to very, very far away in your office, it shouldn't be the problem. If you're commuting, the phone is always in your pocket or it's in your backpack, it should not be a problem at all. So I would say that in the event that Sonos wants to make use of the Wi-Fi connection between the soundbars, which in this case is the Sonos Arc to the Sonos Ace, then there could be more things that they are doing, right? Because uh, they could put in the Atmos track, which is currently what it is touted to do. The other thing is the head tracking. But just bear in mind that other brands, they already have head tracking, which is enabled over Bluetooth. So I don't believe that requires very high bandwidth. But the immediate benefit should be latency, right? Latency over Bluetooth is definitely going to be a lot higher than latency over Wi-Fi. And in most use cases, when you're using sound swap between the Sonos Arc and the Sonos Ace, you want latency to be minimized. Otherwise, you will have lip sync problems when you're watching video content together with audio content. So that is it for today's video. In the next video, I am going to be talking about the Sonos Arc 2. Maybe I know something, maybe I don't. If you're interested, stay tuned, stay subscribed, and I'll see you in that video. Otherwise, check out one of these videos that I've lined up for you on my channel. I'll see you in those videos.